Hello and welcome back to Quartzlite, your car brochure channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Ford Granada Mark II. Hello, welcome back. And incidentally, if you are into car brochures, this is the channel for you, so please do subscribe because I'm sure there'll be something on here you'd be interested in that's already in the back catalogue or is yet to come. So back to today's episode, the Ford Granada Mark II. It ran from 1977 to 1985 and known internally as the Granada 78. Yes, it was released in August 1978, sorry, 77, for the 78 model year. Now, the Granada, it did have a facelift in between. This particular brochure, though, is a very early one, and it's dated September 77, so it's showing the very early ones. We will have a quick look at that um, facelift on another brochure as well, um, but without further ado, Let's open this up and see what we can see. So here is today's brochure. Like I say, dated September 77. So an early one. The easiest way to recognise the uh, the earliest uh, Mark IIs was this black grille. There really isn't too many of these left with the black grille. You often see them with the colour code grille, which was the later facelift model. But you rarely see them black grilled ones anymore. In fact, let's have a look at the uh, facelift. The facelift actually happened in 1981 for the Granada. Um, this is a, a 1983 full range brochure. Um, and the, I always think the thing about the Granada, it was always the car you aspired to have. It was like the flagship. So whichever car you was looking for at the time, say a Fiesta, um, you couldn't help but flick to the back just to see what the top of the range cars would have and of course that was the Granada and if you notice these are the later ones sometimes referred to as the Mark IIb and the easiest way to recognize them is they have this color coordinated grille and also a more of a wraparound bumper um, if you can see that out of the lines a bit more there you go a um, bit more of a wraparound bumper uh, I would say that actually the, the later ones were a slightly more attractive car but nevertheless uh, these are far rarer the earlier mark ones but anyway let's have a look inside and we'll see what this particular brochure has to offer um, one thing to notice it's an unusual size if i know if i put a normal sized ford brochure next to it which tends to be roughly a4 um, this is a strange size brochure um, unfortunately these strange sized brochures tend to suffer a little bit more over age because they're a harder to keep but anyway let's open it up and see what we can see so straight away we look at this the new Ford Granada like I say this is replacing the Mark 1 and really all it is is a reskinned Mark uh, Mark 1 really um, Ford were great at doing these different variations we're doing as little as they possibly could um, but this is a far more um, up-to-date uh, far more stylish um, Granada than previously had um, to match with the rest of the range so it does flip out to show a nice picture of the interior all the blue even matching blue suitcases and they were a big car you can see how much luggage is getting in the boot there and a big roomy spacious vehicle of course this Granada isn't to be confused with the North American Ford Granada which looks completely different some may say hideous I wouldn't dare but I would say this is the more attractive Granada the European Granada a nice little image here of it was like as Ford always does, it's going to go in order of uh, the lowest model. The lowest model being the Granada L at this time. Um, this time we would really, particularly Ford, as probably more than anyone else, really like to, to make the most basic model being very, very basic. Uh, and the highest specs really 
showing off a little bit. Um, so of course we're going to start with the basic one, the, the L. Nice little image showing, you know, it's got a laminated windscreen. If it doesn't have a laminated windscreen, this is what happens. It just cracks rather than just a small chip. So if we look at the L, um, yeah, it's very plain. And you can see um, the earlier Mark IIs, like I said, the, the bumpers cut off a lot sooner. And if we fold the page back again, we'll move back up to the range to the GL with this lovely vinyl roof. Again, all the blue, this time a nice wood insert dashboard. And if we move across, it's a very handsome from the from the rear. Um, like I say, I preferred the front end of the later Mark II Bs, but you know, a very attractive, stylish, executive car of the time. Like I say, a car you really aspired to have. The biggest, the flagship of the range. And if we could move up the trim levels even more, you can like really mounted it even more but like i said let's have a look at this text and let's just see what it's talking about so it's here it's talking about your engine choices on the gl so here's the choice of engines it's from the 2.3 or 2.8 v6 or 2.8 liter v6 with fuel injection or with automatic choke Automatic transmission is standard with the 2.8 V6 and manual transmission is standard with the high performance 2.8 litre V6 fuel injection. The steering is power assisted. There are gas shock absorbers for better ride. The GL's many finely engineered features also include door mounted remote control mirror. There's a tilt and slide sunroof for the best of all weather conditions and a rear fog lamp to help in the worst conditions. The black bumpers are bright cappings and quarter bumper pads. Inside, the GL shares the delightful comfort of the Granada L with some extra touches of its own. The seats have valances and the trim is luxurious diamond fabric. There's a control for variable in interval intermittent wipe for the two speed windscreen wipers. Added instruments include a tachometer, ammeter and oil pressure gauge. The centre console incorporates a quartz clock, cigar lighter, ashtray, trinket tray. The door pulls are also armrests complete with grab handles. In the luggage compartment, there's a black carpet and a boot light. And the push button MWLW radio has three speakers. One at the front, two at the rear, complete with balance control. Besides everything else, the Granada GL is engineered for good life. We then move up the range to a car that I actually I don't remember at the time, the Ford Granada S, sort of like the, a sporty version. It was just basically based on the L, uh, but it had uprated suspension, TRX wheels, and these nice spot lamps to give it a little bit more of a sporty look, which is strange to get sporty on an executive car, but here it is. And like I say, I don't really... really remember them too well um, we'll have a quick look at the text here as well before moving on so with the granada s the engineering emphasis is on performance it has an exciting new 2.8 liter v6 with fuel injection which is well tried and proven system already fitted some of europe's best cars it is beautiful, smooth units which ensures the most efficient use of fuel by metering just the right amount of petrol. Whether crawling in traffic or driving on the motorway with a potential of a top speed of 120. And remember, this is a 1977 for 78 model year, so 120 was a very respectable uh, performance figure. Um, so that really is very impressive and here is that engine it also mentions on this particular white one here it has got an optional extra of 
headlamp wash. Another very rare feature for the time. As we turn over the page, we get a lovely glimpse of the interior of uh, Granada. A very comfortable place, this nice wood fitting. Yes, it's the car everyone wanted, the Granada gear. If I, it's such a huge <laughs> page, this, I can't even get it into the camera shot. It just goes on and on and on. A big car. I guess it's really trying to show that it is such a big car. And I'm here with the gear badge and a nice shade of gold. Like I say, this is the car you wanted, uh, your, your flagship car of the Ford range. Well, the text is saying the Ford Granada gear, look before you read. I guess why it was showing that huge picture so you could get a good look at this flagship car. Because the story of the Granada gear is one of sheer luxury. Luxuries like the twin bucket style rear seats. The Verona crushed velour fabric seat trim topped with fabric covering head restraints. The luxury of wood grain finish on the instrument panel and door capping. The shag pile carpeting colour keyed to the seating. For music on the move, there's a push button mono radio stereo cassette with two front and two rear speakers. The steel sunroof tilts and slides to let you choose your own combination of sun and air. You can also, if you like, have fully integrated air conditioning as an optional extra. All the windows, the front windows electrically operated, are of tinted glass, including a tinted laminated screen. There's a central locking system that controls all the doors and the boot from the driver's door lock and push button on the driver's door. And there's luxury in the gear power unit too. Choose either the 2.8 litre V6 or the 2.8 litre V6 fuel injection. Auto transmission is standard on the 2.8 V6 and manual transmission is standard on the 2.8 V6 fuel injection. Power steering is standard whichever engine is fitted. So a very, very well specced car for the time. Remember, this is the 70s. There wouldn't have been many cars at the time that had all this equipment on. And here it is going into detail, boasting about the electrically operated front windows and central locking system. Quite the thing for the time. On the opposite side, it's going through some of the little bits of the nice details and touches within the Ford Granada gear. A luxurious car it's claiming to be, like I say. I mean, this would have been uh, competing uh, against, you know, BMWs, Mercedes. So, you know, it had to, uh, had all that equipment on there and a very classy car. Like I say, if you wanted a Ford, this was kind of like the car you kind of aspired to one day owning, or at least Ford wanted you to think that way. And we also had the huge estates, a really large load lugger, a uh, very practical car. Typical with, with Ford, um, the estates, the rear end wasn't really changed much from the uh, Mark I Granada, incidentally. Um, very little in, indeed changed. Um, apart from small details, but generally the rear end was the same thing as the Mark 1. And it shows a little bit of information about, you know, this huge load area. Like I say, a, a very practical car um, if you could afford to run it. And then if we turn the page still further, you've also got an option of the diesel Granada, Ford, I wouldn't say they were the best at making diesels at this time, uh, but certainly there was one on offer. Overleaf, there is some of the specifications, um, so we'll have a look at that now. So engine choices, so if you had the L, you're most likely to have this 2 litre unit. I don't think that 2 litre lasted long, actually. I think they soon moved that up to a 2.1. It was very 
underpowered for such a large car. We got a 2.3 litre V6, a 2.8 litre V6, a 2.8 litre V6 fuel injection and that 2.1 litre diesel. Um, and the four cylinder unit was the two litre, the others were six cylinder um, apart from the diesel obviously. Performance, so the 2 litre, maximum speed 102, doing 26 miles per gallon. Um, but you can also have it as a 2.3 if you wanted something a little bit more livelier. As we move up to the range, uh, the top speed of the diesel was only 85 miles per hour. And it was still only getting 31.4 miles per gallon. So that's why I mean the diesels weren't really great from Ford at this time. The car to have, of course, was that 2.8 litre V6 fuel injection doing 120 miles per hour, still getting 25 miles per gallon. So that was really the, the, the engine to have, um, if you could obviously afford it, of course. Um, but, you know, 120 miles per hour in the late 70s was a quick car and it was a big car as well. Moving down to some of the optional extras, I'm not going to go through all these, but if you do want to pause the video and compare at any time, you certainly can do. And then it's talking about the different options, whether it's going to be a manual or automatic. And as you can see, the diesel only available as a manual. On the opposite side, some of the dimensions, interior, rear dimensions, usual little diagram with some of the dimensions on there as well. And then if we turn the page, it gives us quite an attractive little colored diagram. I'll just pull out to see that. And I think the nicest thing about this is kind of like it's showing some of the colour variations. But I'm particularly interested in this Granada S in yellow. That would have looked something a little bit different. But like I say, I don't know if any of you guys know out there how many Granada S's are. If any. Um, particularly these early, these early ones with the black grille. Got to be a, a rare car today. And it goes on to show some more of the cars and colours are available and then finally we get to the back page it shows a little bit of an image uh, called Ford Shewer attractive cut car in silver as you can see at the bottom here I don't know if I can zoom in the code um, and date for this particular brochure FA275 which is September 1977 so there we go, the Ford Granada Mark II. Not many left around today. Long time since I've seen a, a black grilled first Mark II. I don't know if anyone out there has had some experiences with one. I'm sure you have. Of course, the big problem, Ford's late 70s, early 80s, rust was what really killed them off. Thank you for watching today. Please do like and subscribe and we'll see you very soon. So we'll say take care. And goodbye.